Carbon fibre manufacture is something of a mystery. And with good reason, because companies invest a huge amount in their own proprietary techniques. However, the guys here at Zip, manufacturers of some of the nicest carbon parts in cycling, have made me an honorary employee for the day. That's right, they're going to teach us how to build a Zip 404 wheel. How cool is that? No, we had better go, because we are technically late. Aha, so this gentleman here is Michael Hall, who is the Director of Advanced Product Development here at Zip. Now, Michael, you look like you are ready to make stuff. I hadn't thought your role would really be so hands-on. Hands-on, this is my coffee-making outfit. So what we're gonna do, before we get started training, we're gonna go upstairs and get a proper cup of coffee. My kind of company. Not professional, but, but good enough. Oh, wow. There you go. Look at that. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, so once we're fueled up then, what's the next step? Manufacturers actually done here, isn't it, in Indianapolis? Exactly. So what we'll do, what we do with everybody that starts on the first day, we'll basically take you through the process. We'll start all the way back at the cut table and we'll work through and that way you give, you get really good context of what we actually do and then you understand your place and your role as, a, as an operator. Cool. Okay, so this is job number one, actually laying up the carbon that's going to make our 404 wheel. Right, upside down. It's a little bit of overlap. A bit of overlap. Yep. Excellent. All right, and spread it out. I mean, it looks like we're making a pretty big sheet of carbon fiber here. Yeah, so what we'll do is cut it up into different sub-assemblies once we're done with this layup, and, the, and then that will go on to the, the rest of the manufacturing process, and they will assemble it into a rim. And how many layers are we going to so, need for our rim? Depending on what component it is, it could be anywhere from two to ten layers that we'll lay up here. Okay, and on a wheel? Um, it can be, in certain areas of the wheel, it could be up to 21, 22 layers thick. Oh, wow. So we're here for a while, Joseph. So this machine now is actually going to cut our carbon fiber sheet and I need to use this remote control to get it in the right place. Just, oh, wow, sensitive. Okay, ready? Whoa! There it goes. <laughs> Thanks. Now this next stage of the process, I'm coming in a little bit late, but this is where we're actually laying up the carbon fiber into this preformed jig here. You'll see it's starting to look a little bit wheel-like. All we've got to do is to stick this piece down here, but you can see the carbon's really tricky to work with because not only is it really tacky, but it's also still very pliable and you can actually, I'm told, render the wheel completely useless by deforming the fibers there. So it's a really skilled job and it actually takes months before people are allowed to make the wheels. Months of training. As I think you can probably tell I need a little bit more work. Now after the cutting room table, it actually takes two hours to then get the wheel to this point. So you can see it's a pretty labor intensive process. Although it looks a lot faster in Joseph's hands than mine. Stand back. All right, and then, wow, just look at that, it's starting to get, it's really good, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right, so this is our press, I'm guessing, Michael. It, exactly, so this is where we'll take the, the preformed rim, put it in the press tool, this is where the dimples get formed. So what we want to do now is be careful, don't burn yourself, this is well over yeah. 300 degrees. So be careful when you're putting it in the press. So the valve will be lined up here. Do I get oven gloves? Um, no, you just got to do it fast. Serious? Yes. Okay, right then. So just whop him on like a, like a yeah, pancake it, or something. It's, it's not too bad. Just kind of set it in there. Perfect. Kind of line it up. Okay. It's a bit like a, a toasted sandwich maker, right? Exactly. So we'll then let it sit in the mold tool for an hour and a half until it's fully cured. And then it will go, we'll pull it out. Um, do a little deflashing and then move it on to the drilling and the wheel build. Okay, so we've got our wheel fresh out of the mold. It's now very much wheel-like. The valve hole's been drilled, but clearly there are no spoke holes. So that is the next step in the process. It's automated. We need to pop the wheel in the machine. 
and it's going to drill it incredibly precisely, as you might imagine. So our rim is now drilled out, it's been hoovered, but clearly this isn't a wheel yet. That is the next step. Now as you see behind me, this is the wheel building team. Every rim is laced up, trued and then checked by hand, but we have got someone extra special looking after our rim. Come on, check it out. Now the man who's going to be building our wheel is this gentleman here, Nick James, who is the master wheel builder here at Zip. Now Nick, am I right in thinking that you build all the wheels for all the pro teams and the Zip sponsored riders? Yes sir. So how many, how many wheels is that a year? Uh, about 2,000. So what, what, are we, what stage are we at now? You've, you've laced it up. Is there anything left to do on this one? Sure. Jump in here. So I, I've got to true it up. I've, yeah. I've, I've already said I can actually true stuff. Well, you've so got to use the spoke holder. Okay, yeah. You're going to work on this side. All right. Always start at the valve. Yeah. That's your starting point. Okay. Right. So... Put a half turn in them. On all the, on all the non-drive side? Yeah. Right, okay. Uh, right. I feel like I'm under the microscope here. So which, which way do I turn the nipple, Nick? It might take me a while to... That way. Like that. So half turn? Yep. Okay, now this is a super cool thing, right? So we can scan our wheel, and then at the touch of a button, part history, we can track to see who has done each bit of wheel. So everyone who's involved can be really proud of their work. You can see everyone. And look, check it out. Who's that mug? There you go. Now, despite the fact that it takes 10 hours to build a Zip 404 wheel from scratch, many, many of the wheels will come to this place because they need to be tested. So whether it's pre-production or when the wheels are currently in production, they will constantly need to be tested and retested just to make sure that they are up to Zip standards. And so this is the test center where basically carbon well, it gets torture tested. And ah, this man here, Gary, is the global test manager for SRAM. So you oversee an awful lot of products being right. destroyed, basically. Yeah, basically we have the fun job of breaking everything at SRAM here nice. uh, before it gets out to the market. Cool, so, so talk me through it. We've got some cool stuff lined up, right? Oh yeah, so we got uh, inflation testing here for you guys that we're gonna do today. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna pressurize this wheel here. Do I need to put my fingers in my ears? Uh, if you're scared, you probably yeah, okay. should, yeah. All right, so what's it testing for then? Uh, so safety, we're looking for overinflation scenarios. Yeah. So we're gonna take it up to 250 to maybe 350 PSI. Whoa. And we design our wheels to be able to withstand that load. So that's testing like the sidewalls for a clincher? Clincher, yeah. Okay. We're making sure, making sure it holds that pressure. Crikey. Whoa. <laughs> right at 338 PSI. 338 PSI. There you have it, inflation testing. <laughs> well, I feel less bad about putting 120 in now. Now I gather, Gary, that this one is gonna be even more explosive than the last. What's going on here? So here we're doing brake testing. Okay. Uh, we call this our slow burn. Uh, we're really looking to make sure the wheel is gonna hold up, withstand all this braking. Say you're going downhill and you're on the brakes and you need to stop. We're, we're putting heat into the wheel. We're looking for delamination or any cracking. Basically safety. Yeah. to make sure the wheel holds up. And so what are you simulating here then? How fast, how heavy a rider and for how long? Well, we're simulating worst case scenarios. I can't get into all the details. It's a little bit pri proprietary, yeah, but okay. we're putting in a known wattage, uh, known brake force, and we're going pretty fast down the hill and we're keeping the braking consistent. Okay. Would you ever see this in the real world? Are we, is this like way in excess of real world? It's a little bit more excessive. Uh, we do a lot of field research to make yeah. sure that we're testing above what our customers may take it to. Okay, all right. Right then, and you're gonna show us one last one. Right, what, save what the best is this for one? last. Yeah, this looks pretty bad. So here we're gonna do impact testing. Okay. So another safety critical test. Uh, we're gonna impact the wheel, simulate a curb impact or a pothole, and show you how our wheels stand up to that. Okay, and that's a UCI test, that one as well, is that right? Right, so we test through UCI standards and we have our own internal standards that we take further than that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll get to show you how we do it. A head-on collision. Head-on collision, yeah. Now, over here in the corner of the lab, we have stumbled across this pair of wheels. They're counterfeit carbon wheels, so counterfeit zips. And 
it's a massive problem both for consumers and also for brands like Zip who are being ripped off. Now, you don't have to look all that closely to see that they're knockoffs, particularly because this one, they've actually smelled carbon wrong, which seems like a pretty major mistake to make. But what's really interesting about this pair is that they have just been through the same tests that we've witnessed. So this is the impact test here. Now that is not a rideable wheel. The spokes have been ejected from the rim, and that is a massive catastrophic failure. And then this one, this one went through the, uh, the heat brake test, and it failed at well below 100 degrees C less. So effectively, the damage on this wheel, you could see if you were descending a descent in California, for example, in hot weather, and the whole brake track has totally melted off, which is food for thought. So, it turns out after all that, that Zip really feel that my talents might actually lie in opening their mail. Anyway, that was a genuinely fascinating insight into carbon manufacture, I think you'll agree. And if you want to see a little bit more about Zip wheels, then we've got a cracking little video about their 808 NSWs. So if you click straight up there, you'll get through to that. Or to see another factory tour, why not click down there and we will show you behind the scenes of Canyon bikes. And then before going to either of those, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe. Just gonna get back to work. <laughs>